Proverbs 13.5 says, I will trust in your unfailing love. I am the world's worst truster. For some of us early on in our lives, uh, that was a struggle. We had some maybe hidden rules or not so hidden rules in our family. Don't talk, don't trust, don't feel. I learned not to trust in anybody, not to trust in others, not to trust in God, though I try and have tried, and not even to trust in myself, because half the time I, I don't know what to do, but I think I do, and so I try to trust in myself maybe more than others, more than God. So trust. A story is told about a pastor who was flying home from a church conference and on that flight experienced a bit of turbulence on his plane. At first the sign came on, fasten your seatbelts, and so everybody did that and anxiousness grew on the passenger's faces a little bit. A little while later the sign came on, at this time we won't be serving beverages due to some turbulence that we'll be experiencing. Again, the concern on people's faces grew and then finally, the third sign came on where people thought, oh no, we're in trouble. And that was, uh, we will not be serving meals at this time due to turbulence that lies just ahead. People began to get a little bit more anxious. So sure enough, the thunder started to crack and people could hear the thunder above the roar of the engines. The lightning flashed in the sky. People could see that out their window. And it was as if the plane began to toss a bit like a cork on a turbulent sea, so to speak, or on a lake with white caps. And people began to get even more anxious and concern grew on their faces and there were some, oh, as the plane went up and down like a roller coaster and people's stomachs began to jump a bit. And the pastor looked around, he saw people concerned and anxious, but he saw one little girl who was totally calm and at peace. And she had her legs tucked up on the chair and was reading from a book. And every once in a while she would look up and kind of smile and then return to reading her book. Was sitting there quiet, quietly, silently, and seemed to be at peace. Well, after a while, of course, they made it home and they landed safely. And as they're disembarking the airplane, the pastor went by the little girl and said, I just couldn't help but notice how peaceful you were and how quiet you were and how calm you were. Can I ask how or can I ask why that was so? And the little girl smiled and said, well, my dad's the pilot and he's taken me home. Can we trust God like that little girl? It's an issue of love, I think. Trusting God is entrusting ourselves to the love of God. Psalm 13, 5, I will trust in your unfailing love. So may you and I do that this week, this moment, hour by hour. Set an alarm on our clock asking God or telling God, I'm going to trust you for this next hour as best I can. Please help me to choose that. And if I had enough time, I don't even know what time I've been going here, I'd share a little acrostic of mindfulness to even apply this further. Let me do it real quick. RAIN, the acrostic. Recognize, acknowledge, investigate, and not identify. So recognize when the fear arises. Acknowledge that fear. Hold it gently. Inquire and investigate a little bit into that fear. What, what is it about? And then not identify with it. Not attachment, not identify. I am not this fear. I am not this worry. I am God's child. I am safe and secure in God's loving care and loving arms. So that might be a practical way to apply this trusting God in our lives. So thanks for joining me if you're out there. Preaching to myself anyways. <laughs> what I need to hear, what I need to practice. So maybe take what's helpful and leave the rest. And until next time, may you live all the days of your life.